So far, we've looked at the trig functions of acute angles. Today, we're going to look at the trig functions of any angle. And so I have a coordinate plane here, and I'm just going to draw in my circle, where I know here, this would represent my radius, call this angle theta, let this be my initial side. I'm going to drop my 90 degree angle so I can use my trig functions. And if I look at this coordinate right here, this would be the distance I go over x and the distance that I rise y. So that's the point x, y. So if I look at this triangle and I think of my six trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent of this angle, theta. Sine, remember, our tool to help us memorize these is SOKATOA. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Sine of angle is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. X over R. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So Y over X. And we can look at our reciprocal functions too. So the reciprocal of sine is cosecant of theta. We just flip it. It's hypotenuse over opposite. I look at secant of theta. That would be my hypotenuse over adjacent. And cotangent of theta is adjacent over opposite. And so if I actually think of the unit circle where in the unit circle the radius is 1, that would just change the sine of theta would be your y-coordinate and the cosine of theta would be our x-coordinate. And in general, the radius really does not matter because similar triangles, the ratios are the same. So we can apply this really to any trig function. And so what we need to do first is we need to remember some special triangles. Our 45, 45, 90 triangle and our 30, 60, 90 triangle that we learned in geometry class. So if we look at the note sheet that you should have, we're first going to think of the 45, 45, 90 triangle. And we're going to think back to geometry class. In geometry, you had a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And in that, remember that if you have two angles that are equal, then these two sides are going to be equal in length, and then we have what an isosceles triangle. So if we know these sides are equal, we can call them both x, although I don't know x could represent any number. And we know that the hypotenuse would be x square root 2. This is just one of those properties we learned back in geometry class. So if I think of my unit circle, I know that my radius right here, if it's a unit circle, will be 1. Now I'm going to draw in my 90 and my 45 degrees. So if that is 1, then I can start to think about, well, what would this side be? Well, if the hypotenuse is 1, I'm going to set over here this equal to 1. So I have x squared to 2 equals 1. And I want to figure out, well, what is that value for x going to be? So let's solve for x. Divide by the square root of 2. The problem is, I can't have a radical in the denominator, so I have to rationalize the denominator. So I multiply through by the square root of 2, top and bottom, because the square root of 2 divided by the square root of 2 is the number 1. 1 times anything does not change the value of that, so that's a property we can do. So when we do this, I get 1 square root of 2, which is just square root of 2, over square root of 2 times square root of 2 is the square root of 4. The square root of 4 we know is 2. So x is square root of 2 over 2 when the hypotenuse is 1. So here's one triangle, 45, 45, 90, I'm going to need to remember. Now the second triangle I need to remember are my 30, 60, 90 triangle. So if I come over here to my 30, 60, 90 triangle, I need to think back to geometry class when I learned about 30, 60, 90 triangles. This is not a very good one, but we'll make it do. So we'll call this 30 degrees, call that 60 degrees. Doesn't look like it, but 
All right, so we, we know that if we have the shortest side is always across from the smallest angle, we'll call the shortest side x. We know the hypotenuse is double the shortest side, so we'll call that 2x. And we know that the longest side, not meaning the hypotenuse, just the longest side, is going to be short side square root 3. One of the properties we learned, again, from geometry. Now, we're saying that the hypotenuse here is going to be 1. So if I say my hypotenuse here is going to be 1, what is x going to be? Well, we can solve that. Divide both sides by 2 to get x alone, and x is going to be 1 half. So that means the short side is going to be 1 half across from 30. And then what will that mean that the longer side is across from 60? Well, if x is 1 half, I get 1 half times square root of 3. 1 half times the square root of 3? Well, that simplifies to the square root of 3 over 2. So this side square root of 3 over 2 is right here across from the 60 degree side. And I could do it again, just another 30, 60, 90 triangle. 60 degrees, apply what I just did. I know my hypotenuse is 1. Across from 60 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. And across from the 45 degree, or I'm sorry, across from the 30 degree angle is the side 1 half. So these are two properties that we need to know um, that are very important in geometry. So again, we'll just look at the triangle solo. So we have a 30 degree, sorry, 30 degree we'll put here, 60 degree, and 90 degree. And we'll also look at a 45, 45, 90. And so if we talk about the hypotenuse as always being 1, if we think about our 30, 60, 90 triangle across from the the smallest angle will be your shortest side. And if the hypotenuse is 1, i got to cut that in half to get the shortest side, which would be 1 half. Remember, the short side, we double it to get the hypotenuse. We cut it in half to get the short leg. And then we know that across from the 60 degree angle will be the side, short side square root 3. So this would just simplify to square root of 3 over 2. So across from 60 degrees, this is something we need to memorize. The 30, 60, 90 triangle, across from 60, the square root of 3 over 2, across from 30 degrees is 1 half, and the hypotenuse is 1. The 45, 45, 90 triangle, what I need to memorize here is that if the hypotenuse I know is 1, well then the two legs are just going to be square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. So again, we need to get these memorized and, and have these because they're going to be instrumental when we begin to talk about the unit circle.